I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today here at Go Parallel, we're going to look at the Monte Carlo method, which is a set of algorithms used for modeling and simulating physical systems. And the reason we're going to look at this is it lends itself very nicely to parallel programming. So today I'm going to give you a brief explanation of what it is and how it works. Now, I've always thought of the Monte Carlo method as being named for the Monte Carlo race, but in fact, it's named for the, the casino named Monte Carlo. And both are in Monaco, and the casino, I guess, makes sense because the Monte Carlo method deals with random numbers, as does a casino and gambling. So. The Monte Carlo method can be used for many different types of physical simulations, and one way you can use it is to calculate the value of pi. Now this isn't the best way to calculate the value of pi by any means, but it's a good way to learn how the Monte Carlo method works. So first, let's look at a circle uh, inscribed inside a square, and the radius of the circle is going to be given as r, and so the side of the square is going to be d or 2r. The diameter is twice the radius. Now, the area of the circle, of course, is given by pi r squared. The area of the square is going to be d times d, which is 2r times 2r, which is 4r squared. So let's take the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square. When we do that, we get pi r squared over 4 r squared. And the r squareds cancel, and we get pi over 4. That means the area of the circle is pi over 4 of the area of the square. And so if we can figure that out, what that ratio is, we can multiply that number by 4 and then calculate the value of pi. Now again, I just want to mention again, this isn't by any means the ideal way to calcu calculate pi, but it works as a demonstration of the Monte Carlo method. Okay, now I'm over here in Inkscape, and I've got uh, the same thing, the circle inside the square. And now imagine if I'm going to take some random numbers and just drop randomly uh, little balls inside this this whole design here. Now we could do this as an actual physical simulation where we draw on the floor a circle and square and we we throw throw coins or something into it and watch them land. Now they might land around in a few different places and it's not particularly useful if we only get a couple of them. Uh, what we're ultimately going to do is count how many of these land inside the circle and compare that to the total number that have landed inside, which the total number represents how many have landed inside the square. So if we take the ratio of how many landed inside the circle versus the total number that landed inside the whole square, that in theory will give us our pi over four. Now, as you can see here, I took, I, I threw in four of them, three landed inside the circle, and out of four possibilities. Well, pi over four is not 0.75. Uh, however, if we keep increasing these things and we get more and more and more, eventually we're going to start to see the numbers get closer to pi. We're going to see those numbers go up and up. And if we get to, say, a thousand of these or 10,000 of these or 100,000 or a million, we're going to we're going to each time get closer to the value of pi. And that's basically how this works. Now, I want to mention that if we're doing this on the computer, we could actually just count the number of pixels inside this thing. Count the pixels that the whole thing takes up, and then count the pixels on here that are black, or sorry, count the pixels on here that are gray, and that'll give us the the number of pixels that make up the circle, compare that to the number of pixels that make up the whole thing. And however, that's not really what we're trying to go for here. The Monte Carlo method deals with random numbers and random samplings. And, and that's why we use random numbers in this demonstration. Now one issue is, how do you generate these random numbers? And more importantly, in our, our case, how do you do it in a way 
that's parallel friendly. And that's where the in Intel Math Kernel Library comes in. It has a library called the Vector Statistical Library. And inside that is a whole set of random number generators. These can generate random numbers as a whole array without having to do, write a loop uh, that loops over and over one random number at a time. It can fill up an entire array and it's parallel friendly and works very well with your parallel code. And that's basically just the start. And in the future video and in the blogs, we're going to look at these random number generators and how they work. And from there, we can build up our own Monte Carlo simulation.